Thank you. Uh, <coughs> no, okay, I'm Juha, and I came to talk about Puova.org, which is a project of our company, and it's basically the purpose of it is to manage Linux desktops in large scale in Finnish schools. So our target market is schools, but I'm me. Uh, I've been a free software hobbyist for about two decades now, and working at OpenSys over 10 years for now. So what is our company? We employ about 15 people, uh, and we provide IT sol solutions to schools. And uh, while we do some other things, uh, uh, we, the, I think the primary thing that we do is that we maintain a uh, quite large number of uh, Linux desktop computers in primary and secondary schools. Uh, I'd say that we maintain over 5,000 active. Uh, what does active mean? What, something like uh, uh, hosts which are daily used by, uh, by people uh, around 5,000, and maybe there are something like 10,000 less active used. And uh, we also manage a lot more user accounts. Uh, we uh, employ about two software developers usually. Uh, I'm the other one. We also have uh, uh, other kinds of people, product managers, help desk people, uh, people with teaching backgrounds, and so on. So how we started out? Uh, uh, at, at, at the time we started out, uh, the marketplace was dominated by Microsoft Windows, pretty much, and uh, we had a simple... Uh, uh, business plan, we are going to provide LTSP to schools. LTSP stands for Linux Terminal Server Project. And uh, we provided Ubuntu, GNOME, Firefox, OpenOffice, and, and such. And uh, yeah, I think it was a pretty good business plan. Uh, the, the, the idea was to provide uh, services that, that are needed by schools uh, in a cheap way. And it was good enough uh, at that time, I think. Uh, but times have changed. Now it's Apple with iPads and Google has Chromebooks and services. Uh, they are competing with Microsoft. And I feel that, uh, we feel that uh, thin clients are not uh, quite up to modern standards as a technology. And L LTSP uh, feels a bit outdated, I think. Uh, Remote X does not really well for all, all use cases very well. So basically we have had to say goodbye to LTSP. And the most important reason for that is that we mostly target laptops these days. Laptops are the most uh, used uh, kind of device in school environments, and uh, LTSP doesn't really help with that. We also do provide some diskless workstations uh, uh, with shared home directories and server, and these resemble more like LTSP fat clients. Uh, we started with Ubuntu, but then Canonical did a bit of a trick to us, I think. Uh, and to other people as well. Uh, they changed their IP policy in 2015, uh, and I still think that you can read that on the uh, canonical web pages. You can redistribute Ubuntu, but only where there has been no modification to it. And we certainly did modifications to our Ubuntu, and we thought about this, that are we going to talk about canonical about this, or what are we going to do? And we decided not to take any legal risks, and we decided to make a switch to Debian. So, okay, what is Puavo? Uh, it's basically the system that we uh, develop to service our customers, and it consists of two components mostly. There's the Puavo Web, which is web software for, for user and device management, and then there's the OS operating system, which is basically a special build of a Debian uh, a Linux operating system. And it's been free software a long time, uh, but we just haven't marketed it as much. It's basically not community-developed uh, system. We just uh, use it for ourselves to service our customers, uh, and I, I suppose it shows in some details that it's not a, a product that is easy to start using by outsiders. Uh, but it's there, it's available for everyone to actually, if you want to do similar things, you can try it out. And uh, what, what our goals are system, uh, we, of course we try to provide a, provide a good system for education. We want it to be maintainable by a few admins, yet scalable to large environments. Uh, we want to support computers for a long time. I think 10 years is about in the ballpark that if a, if a computer is over 10 years old, it's time to move on to more modern machines, I think. Uh, but, but we try it, and uh, currently we require 64-bit uh, support. 32-bit uh, com only computers are, are a bit outdated. It's time to move on. We try to be reasonably secure, but we're not a bank, so we're not perfect. Uh, uh, we do not want to try to depend on technologies by the big three uh, IT companies, American companies. Uh, of course, the tech by, by those can be used with our system, but we would not like to have a hard dependency on, on the, these companies. And uh, yesterday, Shane, James Shubin gave a talk about configuration management engines and languages, 
and uh, these are nice and, and we use some of that as well uh, but we have not seen much of uh, open source written with those languages and we try to change that a bit it would be nice to have a system administration a system ad administration code released as open source uh, which could be used to build systems used actually used in the real world uh, we have uh, Provo, uh, Provo has uh, two different major components. The web part is the other one. It's a Ruby on Rails application, but uh, unusually we do not use a, a relational database. We use LDAP for it, and uh, uh, this is for some reasons. Uh, we we use a separate database for each organization, but we can use one centralized installation for all organizations. We use MIT Kerberos which can be used to provide a single sign-on, which is good, so that people don't have to log in uh, to different, uh, separately log in to each web application that they need to use. And uh, for each organization can have its own school servers and we can keep an organization, organization specific uh, copy of the database uh, as a read-only copy on the school servers. Uh, the web has user management part. It has pretty much the standard stuff that you would expect to such a thing to have. It has uh, uh, hierarchies of entities and uh, some user users can have special permissions to do things such as uh, change student passwords if they want to. Uh, oh, we can also provide LDAP access to external applications such as Moodle so that it can use directly the user database for authentication and such. And we can also use to some extent uh, external user databases as a source for user information. We have some Microsoft AD integration Mostly, I think that is it. Uh, we also have device management. Uh, uh, we have a, we, we keep a database of devices in school, and the power can be used to manage power OS hosts to some extent and, and affect their functionality. And we also gather a bit of information how the devices are used. And then there's the power OS part. We currently based on Debian Stretch. Uh, Buster is almost ready for production. Uh, this is something that I would, would, could say a few words on. Uh, the, the, we tend to be a bit conservative. We still certainly prefer to follow the Debian stable releases. I think we are a bit uh, slow, a bit too slow in, in following that, but, but still it's, it's the best environment for schools, I think. Slow moving, reliable is good. Uh, we used to be, be best on LTSP, but we have diverged because of the laptop issue, and uh, we no longer have uh, LTSP as a dependency. If you actually want a school environment with LTSP, the Scala Linux is an option. I think they have a stand here. Uh, yeah, and uh, how we distribute the Power OS, it's we basically make a squash of this image, which is a compressed read-only disk image, and we update it, update it automatically without any disruption for users. So, so in the ideal case, and it works pretty well, users never notice any update, updates in any way. The desktop is GNOME 3, but GNOME 3 in its default setting is a bit uh, strange for people, I think. So we tweak it with extensions to behave more like Windows, which is something that they are being used to. And uh, we provide basically the standard stuff that you would expect to have in a free software desktop environment. And we have some special features, I think. Uh, this is a bit crazy and strange. I think we uh, use the same system image for different hosts that can have different uh, modes of functioning. And we basically use the same system image for boot servers, laptops, and diskless workstations. So basically, uh, how we do it, we build an image, and then, then we put the image on the host. And before we give control to systemd, we use our special init tricks to set it up the environment so that it functions properly in that role. So boot servers configure themselves as NFS servers before systemd takes over. And then we can boot a disk workstation using the same Im image uh, through NBD. And then the disk workstation is going to be configured as an NFS client. And uh, then they work together. And it's, it's a bit strange, but it works for us because we can then use the same installer and same update mechanism for each, each type of host. Uh, we also provide automatic power off when idle during non-school hours, guest loggings, uh, other strange features. <clears throat> uh, what about Google? Is, is it a friend or an enemy? Uh, 
in practice, schools need environments for collaboration. It's not simply enough to have hosts and computers and networks and, and applications. There needs to be some kind of environment that they collaborate in. And in practice, our system tends to get paired with Google Apps for Education, which is, on the other hand, it's a good thing, because if that didn't exist, I think we would be, uh, schools would probably use something like Microsoft Office Online or something like that, and we would be in trouble. Uh, there used to be uh, uh, interoperability issues with Linux uh, browsers. Uh, in, in fact, you had to fake the user agent uh, for it to work. Uh, things have gotten a bit better these days, but it may be partially because of, of the Google Apps for education. And sometimes it feels as if we have become a thin client provider for proprietary Google App services. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a bit problematic from the privacy point of view. I think uh, sometimes it feels as if we are teaching children how to use spyware in schools, even though I, I realize that they don't, uh, they promise that they don't actually exploit the data. Uh, they, so maybe there could be a privacy conscious school market out there. Uh, this is something that we might uh, do in the future. Uh, the next cloud looks interesting, Collabor Office things like that, but at, at the moment it feels that in Finland there is no market for these people are just content to use the Google services. But I have heard or understood that in some other countries such as Germany, uh, the, the politics and the legal legalities are such that uh, the, it's, it's not just so simple to just put student or children data to, to American companies. So this might be an interesting uh, development that we should do, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, what we also need is better documentation and we should probably fix issues so that everything more, works more like out of the box. Uh, currently what we do appears to be something as if it's done by administrators to other administrators, which is, which is true and you should realize it if you try it out. Uh, we, the, this one, one image to rule them all strategy is, is also good but it's not perfect. Maybe something like GUIX or NixOS is something that we might want to look into in the future. So if you, if you want to deploy Linux desktops, desktops or laptops in schools, uh, if you have just 10 hosts to maintain, don't bother with this. If you have 100, I don't know what you should do. If you have 1,000, this might be just what you need. Uh, we also have a, there are also a few schools uh, that use our technology in Switzerland and in Germany with some experience. Okay, this is not related, forget everything that I said. Uh, this is not related to what, we, what I just talked. I just want to give a quick note in which other way Linux is present in Finnish schools. And this is not related to Puava. Uh, in the final year of upper secondary school, there are final examinations that have been digital for some years now. And uh, the examination software for that is proprietary. I have heard that someday that might actually change. It would be a very good thing, but so far it hasn't, hasn't happened. But anyway, for the examination, uh, the students must provide their own laptops and their uh, examination uh, system, the client side, uh, is, is de delivered as in USB drives and it's a Linux system uh, based on Debian. And this creates a strong incentive for high school students to buy Linux compatible hardware because they have to provide, provide their own uh, in the final examination. And uh, if you go to Finland in some computer stores, you might see this uh, sticker on the, on the computers, which basically says that it's, this computer is final examination compatible. It basically means that it's Linux compatible, but it's, it's marketed as such because that's what the, the students care about. So, okay, we have one minute for questions. If you have any, please shoot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know, um, how do you perform the initial installation on, on the laptops of your image? Is uh, it through we, network or...? We, we have our own installer for it. Sorry? We have our own installer okay. for it. We basically partition it ourselves. Okay. And uh, uh, b basically it takes about three minutes uh, on, on a fast network. Uh, if it takes more than that, somebody's going to complain. So it has to be very fast. We basically just create the file systems and then copy the necessary uh, files in place. And the, the laptops which are then installed with this Pover system, are they 
then uh, dependent on having a connection to the server or can they also be taken elsewhere and like used independently without a connection to the server? Yeah, yes, they can. Ab absolutely. That's absolutely a requirement that laptops can be, uh, uh, can function without a network connection and uh, don't really need uh, a con connection to Povo, centralized Povo server for functioning. What makes a school environment unique for device management? What makes it different from other situations where you manage devices on a large scale? Uh, well, it, it has to, uh, there's no time. Uh, it's actually a good question, and it, 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 isn't nece it isn't necessarily so. I think the school environments, uh, the, the requirements are pretty uniform. Mostly, so so if if one well, this is not something that I would push to developers because developers would like to install this and that and do that and that and so on. So so it's, it's the requirements are pretty uniform, and for that reason, so that everything works without a hitch is is the the, the main requirement. Okay, okay. Thank you for your talk.